Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Story number one, The Human Agenda, written by Jimmy Agent 007. Parlax was having difficulty with his class, trying to teach the assorted alien words that had been incorporated after every first contact was always difficult. But the newer set was the worst. Not that they were particularly complex or difficult to understand the meaning, but rather hard to convince anyone of their necessity. But uh, when would we ever use it? The student asked the one question the young of every species seemed to ask the most things. Definitely, when dealing with humans, Parlax repeated. There is a reason the word ridiculous is synonymous with human and absurd. That's the other word on the list that I'm having trouble with, another stated. You all are. Look, if I had a human handy to talk to you, I think that you would understand it better in context. But, but trust me, you'll need these words. Humans have immigrated to every planet capable of supporting life in the galaxy. We should be so happy that we only need to learn a few of their words. Now you're referring to how dangerous the humans are? Yes. They could have rampaged across the stars and conquered us all. Instead, they proved quite friendly. And once we figured out the galactic society could hardly pose a threat to them if we tried. He paused before emphasizing the next word. Ridiculously so. I'm still not sure how that fits, sir. He sighed. Before the humans let their people travel about, they warned us about their quirks. A fair and practical procedure for all races. Their crime and safety advice essentially ended crime galaxy-wide. Protocols made to keep humans in line aren't going to be circumvented or violated by any of us. Medicine and surgical techniques are saving lives by the millions since humans practiced medicine on themselves and on every other animal on their planet they could. Everyone knew someone whose life had been saved by human medicine. You see, the human homeworld was so dangerous that the only way the humans were able to survive was to support each other. They aren't a hive, but if a predator attacked one, they'd all gang up and kill it. Because it would kill more if they didn't. They bond so intensely that they would be willing to risk their lives in such a confrontation. It all fed into the quest to survive. Yes, their biology is terrifying. It's what allowed them to survive the systemic stress test of every conceivable problem a civilization could have. Again, the students nodded. Every galactic emergency had been solved by humans showing up with already proven techniques, needing only minimal adaptation. A rogue planetoid causing flooding as it passed by a world. Humans showed up to build dams and dikes to protect the cities. A swarm of hive alien race gone rogue. Napalm. Lots and lots of napalm. Too much ice? You better believe humans knew how to melt it. Too little? They figured out the problem as well. Almost too late. So humans are generally just happy to make friends and be helpful. Most of the time, they forget to even ask for any form of repayment. Simply that we pay it forward and help others when we can. Life in the galaxy has been so safe that there hasn't been a need for a galactic congress to have a meeting in many cycles. They are only having one this week simply because they hit a maximum duration between meetings. I think our ambassador this time is actually a human himself. There were some murmurs before students spoke up. I, uh, thought that the, the Mulax ambassador was the human one. No, it's the Frush ambassador. Another student stood up. Soon, every race in his class insisted that their species ambassador was actually a human, and the professor was getting concerned. Are you all pointing out that all of our respective ambassadors are just humans who immigrated in our worlds? He quickly did a search for the ambassadors of the Galactic Congress. Sir, uh, are you all right? The concerned student asked. Well, this is just fucking ridiculous, Parlax uttered lamenting that he would now have to teach the students a word that he was hoping to avoid, now that he used it as an intensifier. Meanwhile, at the Galactic Congress. Well, uh, this is awkward, the human ambassador uttered as he took his seat and realized why the room was so quiet. The chairman of the Congress sat at the head of the room, an Andromedan's explorer who flung his sleeper ship with the Milky Way galaxy just to see what was there. 
was happy to find intelligent life and settled nicely into his role since he had no invested bias towards any of the races living there. He was also the only non-human in the room meant to represent the 745 races in the galaxy. The human seemed to be as confused as he was. Everyone was simply looking around to see if there really was no alien ambassadors. It slowly dawned on them that by being so prolific in their travels and social aptitudes, humans simply found themselves in unintentional control of the Galactic Congress. Everyone, a woman representing the Doralus shouted, you know what that means, right? She jumped onto her table to make grand gestures with her hands. We can rule everything, we can take control, and we can pass any resolutions. Humans have the ultimate power in the galaxy, and it's our chance to see our vision of the galaxy become a reality. Cheers rose up from the humans in the room, and the chairman was nervously wondering what the humans would do. The humans had seemed so friendly as long as he had known them. Was it all an act? What was their agenda? Back in the classroom, Parlax saw the proclamation that had just come down from the Galactic Congress. He was stunned. He couldn't even speak. He was only shaken from his stupor by a confused student asking what literally every alien in the galaxy was now asking themselves. What is Taco Tuesday? And uh, why is it now a galactic holiday? End of story. First contact, written by Traumatized Waffle. Target sighted. It's, uh, it's hunched over something. Yak spoke quietly into his cranial mounted communicator. He died in his grip on his emulator. His three eyes locked on the creature several feet from him. He had been following it ever since it had crawled out of the wreckage of an alien starship that had crashed several days ago. His chest tightened as he momentarily saw the metallic gleam of a blade in one of the creature's hands. He shoved his sphere aside and quietly maneuvered around the creature, finally getting a look at what it was doing. A dead mud crawler lay before the creature, and it was using a knife to remove the skin and chunks of meat. Yuck was appalled. For what reason was the creature committing such a display of pointless barbarity? He continued watching as the creature placed the chunks of meat on the hide, wrapping it and securing it shut. The creature suddenly stopped and turned in Yuck's direction, eyeing him squarely. It raised one of its appendages and pointed at him, saying something in what Yek assumed to be its native tongue. I am compromised. The creature has seen me. Please advise. Yek spoke shakily into his communicator. Roger, does the creature show any sign of hostility? Then the voice of his commander. The creature was currently standing in the same spot, gesturing with one of its appendages and continuing to speak. No, sir. I, I believe it it's uh, trying to communicate with me. Yek responded. Acknowledged. Uh, approach the creature carefully, and don't show any hostility unless you feel threatened. His commander ordered. Yek was silent for a moment. You got that, Lancer Yek? He spoke again. Yes, sir, Yek replied. He carefully stowed his emulator and began to slowly approach the creature. His hands held up to his chest level. The creature seemed curious at his approach, as Yek was about half the distance to the creature. The creature slipped a blade it held into a loop of fabric at its waist and began advancing towards Yak. Yak stopped for a beat, worried for a moment. However, he continued his advance after taking note that the creature had stowed its weapon as well. They both stopped with a distance of only a couple of feet separating them and stared at one another. Yak noticed the creature, unlike him, had two small eyes instead of three large ones. The creature looked Yak up and down, before extending his hand slowly towards Yek. Yek recoiled, fearing the creature was about to attack. After a moment, he noticed that the creature had stopped holding its hand out towards Yek. Yek was unsure what the creature was trying to convey. He slowly held one of his hands out, and the creature wasted no time gently grabbing it and shaking it. The creature's mouth spread wide, showing its teeth, and it began to bounce up and down excitedly. The creature stopped bouncing and held both its hands out before gesturing to itself. Human! Who? Man! It spoke before then pointing towards Yak and cocking its head to the side. Yak was lost for a moment and he realized that human was likely the name of the creature's species and must now be inquiring as to what he was. Yak mimicked the human gesture. Drakna! Drakna! 
He spoke slowly, unsure if the creature would comprehend. The human's face lit up. He pointed towards Yek again. Drachna, human, friends? The human spoke. Yek wasn't sure what the human was trying to say exactly, but he had a feeling. He held his hand out again, and the human excitedly grabbed it and shook it again. Come on, Yak spoke into his communicator. But is it Lancer Yak? Came the voice of his commander. I think, uh... I, I think I just made first contact with the human. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. 